Let's shift the focus now to Nebraska's defense. Tony White, we got our first look at the 3-3-5. I saw a lot of flying around. I saw a lot of playmakers. I love MJ Sherman. I love the young guys. We hit on Stefan Wynn now leaving. He was working with that number two defense. Um, you know, there, there's definitely some things to like about this this team, um, but I still think can this work in the Big Ten? Can you can you be undersized and play fast in this league, or do you need to have the big bodies to match up late in the year? Well, they have some big bodies, and I think they have enough. probably not enough. I don't think they do. They have they do have material though. They have some explosion. Yeah. Um, They're way better on the edges, it seems. Yeah. I, the three three five. Now you notice that a lot of the time they're not in a three three five. I mean, it's a lot of four down. They're, they're in a four man front a lot of the time. They'll move in and out, like most teams do. That's mm -hmm. why I never, I never get too wrapped up in that that discussion. Um, but I like some of the material. That I mean, I just watch the game and think, can is this team? What's this team? How's it project into the autumn? Looks pretty good. I mean, I think they look like a team that can be, play in a bowl game. They they they're not great. They have deficiencies. The main one being, and let's be honest, my NFL player surefire do you see out there right now that'll be in the draft next year. That, I mean, you got to think about that. Surefire. You know, Newsom maybe. Yeah, Newsom. I would say Newsom. There's not many you can just reel off next year. So that's that's like you can't even say Reimer at this point. No, you know, not really. I mean, he's a good college player. He's he's arguably their best player on defense. But no, you can't really. He's a little undersized. Like Ty Robinson, you can't say mm -mm. right now. It's hard. Um, there's guys that eventually, I think, yeah, that have the potential. Yeah, but they're but not I'm there about, yet. Right. I'm talking about, and I'm talking about next year. They're on no early mocks that are going to be posted on. Saturday night and Sunday morning. That's so that's I try to do that where I, I look at it that way because you're playing opponents that do have that. Yep. I mean, you're playing Michigan that you could go to their starting lineup right now and probably pick five guys that are going to be NFL mm -hmm. draft picks. and they're number twos. <laughs> so some of that, yeah. So there's I try to think of it that way. All Americans, all Big Ten players. Did you are, are there surefire all Big Ten players out there that you saw? No, there's really not. So that's – we have to – I think we have to ramp up that discussion. Well, and who's the only draft pick for Nebraska, like surefire right now? Trey Palmer. And you saw the impact what a draft pick can do on a game. 100%. No like, doubt. A draft pick changes a game. That's just a draft Jimmy's pick. the Joes. That's just a draft pick. Sean, you're old enough. Rob, you're old enough. You're old, you're old enough to remember when Nebraska had All-American players. Now, the last one was Levante David. That was 2011. That's the last all America to state college. They're playing a top 10 Penn State team without Joe Paul. It's second and two. Levante okay. David stuffs them. Yeah. It's third and one. Levante David stuffs them. It's fourth and one. Levante David stuffs That's them. Right. Game That's over. Look at their last first rounders and just the impact those players had. Randy Gregory, or it would have would have been a first rounder. You know, oh, like he those types of he's gonna be a Prince top of five Prince of Mucamara. Like, yeah. I mean, you're talking about like elite level players that have yeah. gone on to have right long NFL careers and mm -hmm. like that's what that's the difference like that's Jake Locker remember how good he was a first round draft pick quarterback in Nebraska's secondary in Seattle made him look locked silly. him down mm -hmm. yeah now that, and that's what I'm saying we have to get back to the to we have to emphasize that part of the discussion I mean again you haven't had an all-american at Nebraska since 2011 okay you haven't had an all-american offensive lineman at Nebraska since 2001 Okay, we, what do we always say? Well, you, you got to win in the trenches. They used to regularly produce all American offensive linemen at Nebraska. Regularly. You can just look at the decade. Look at the decade of the 90s. There were six or seven, um, eight, eight, I think. There are eight in the 90s. Go back to the 80s, there were some. Um, if you just look at the 2000, Nebraska had two of them Russ Holkstein and Dominic Rayo. They had mm -hmm. two all American offensive linemen. Okay. Um, that and you know he had Finotti on that in that group. He had three guys. That's what it takes. I mean that that's what you need. Well, even just like an all Big Ten level player. I mean, yeah, not even like, just all American. I'm talking I'm not a, second, third. Team. Don't minimize it all the time. I, I, I mean, I, I mean a first team all Big Ten player. Then you're probably almost you're you're really an all American. Yeah, you're almost. I mean, when the league yeah. is now like 
Mm-hmm. Right. 16 teams. I mean, go to the 90s when you had Stein, Weger, All-American, All-American. You had Aaron Taylor, All-American. You had uh, Shields, All-American. Now, those are just off the top of my head. I, I might have missed one or two in there. And that's how, what happened. And why, is it, why do we never talk about it? Well, I think we do <laughs> when we talk about why Nebraska is not winning the Big Ten. It's line play. Yeah, and that's a direct. I go get those guys. Correlation no, there, and there's no shortcuts at them. You can maybe at some places have shortcuts to building a line because you have access to talent. Uh-huh. Nebraska doesn't have access to talent. They have to build their lines the right way. Mm-hmm. You can't just you know you're not in a highly populated area where you can just plug in guys. Right. Like you, you have to find guys, develop them, and teach them the right way. Yeah, and the development that's. That's the part of it. They've gotten big, they've got NFL multiple NFL linemen over the last ten years. Mm-hmm. Guys that start, they're guys that are captains yep. on their team, but they're they, for some reason from their profile as a high school recruit to their NFL career, there's a lull when they come to Nebraska. Or they play these guys. That's, too that's a huge red flag. They play these guys maybe a year or two earlier. Mm-hmm. Than they should. Yeah, they're not quite ready. And then they're not ready. Like, look, yeah, like Nick okay, Gates getting thrown into the fire. Turner right away. Corcoran. Think about Turner Corcoran. Yeah, that's a great example. Like his best game was the Rutgers game when he first came out, you know, when he took over from Brandon Hymas and Brandon Hymas um, left early, left early mm-hmm. for the Rutgers game in 2020. And then we never, you know, then he tried to play Hurd in 2021 at Illinois and he hadn't been the same since. Mm-hmm. Like he just has not been that level of player that we saw where we were at Rutgers, we're like, man, this guy's going to be a, again the next great one. It goes back to what we said. It's hard in this world, and it's hard at Nebraska to be patient. I mean, it gets hot here fast. and Yeah, because there's like 85 hours of talk radio a day. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. 55 doing, of us at practice. We're doing three podcasts a week. There's 55 <laughs> of us interviewing a third-string quarterback at practice. Yeah, I know. That's good and bad. It's good and bad. Yeah. It's not. It's not all bad. I mean, the kids love that yeah. attention. It's not all bad. I mean, it's, you'd rather have it that way than crickets. Yeah, that kind of stuff is the reason these kids are making the NF- NIL money right. they're making right now. So there's a trade off. There's a big trade off. So it will be interesting to see though in the portal if Nebraska pursues anybody, and, and what Matt Rule will do with those scholarship numbers as they're still trying to get to 85, but. Will they make room to add any more players? And I think a lot of that will depend on who are those players available.